<laughs> well, from the very first day of filming, I, I was finding the... They gave us a real metal heavy sword, so I was finding it heavy, so I was just going to put it into the ground. <laughs> I didn't notice, and I stabbed my toe with it. That's not even embarrassing. That's <laughs> scary. That's but deep. but um, it, it wasn't that bad, I just cut it slightly. But it was quite embarrassing, because I didn't know what was going to happen. I think we were on tin, the Tintagel cliff top, and it was... Um, in front of all the essays and stuff, and we had to. It's when Alex uh, goes to pull yeah. out the sword, and he's like, "Yeah, we've got a quest yeah. to finish." And we were rehearsing it, and I, like, slipped in front of everyone, <laughs> and everyone was like, "Oh, okay." And I was like, "Yeah, it's yeah. okay." And we just carried on with the scene, but that was really embarrassing. As well, just like little slip ups, just slipping. Like when we had when they built the tank, and I was just like water, and I was just <laughs> slipping. And, and you kept dropping in the yeah. water. Well, I did have to play a nude scene in a television production. I was absolutely naked, standing up on a high um, uh, platform in front of the whole crew and everything. And that was difficult. I insisted upon being naked in the scene where Merlin emerges from Stonehenge. However, I quickly regretted it because we did that take over and over and over again because the sun was coming up and they really wanted to capture it. So I soon regretted that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone. I, oh, you have? Is that the have? Oh, yeah. Have you both? <laughs> no. no. It was the day of my 11 plus exam, and I didn't go. I got into huge trouble, both at school and from my family. And, um, and there was talk about resitting it, but I just didn't want to go to a grammar school. I wasn't interested in scholarly things, so I went to a secondary modern school and found an English teacher, and here I am. Oh, I don't recommend it, children. <laughs> You attend your exams and be prepared. Well, I like card tricks, so I perform card tricks. But um, I also did the actual coin trick, which is in the film, which is like palming an extra coin in the hand. So, yeah. I had this one, like, I did it for ages. I thought it was, it was amazing. You know, like, the American dollars? I used to, like, poke a hole in it, a secret hole, and put a pen through it. And then it looked like, and then when I opened it, it didn't look like there was a hole. <laughs> but the, that was a hidden hole. Oh, so you like stab it, through. and it looks like it's gone through it, but it doesn't. Well, performed sorcery in the film, yeah. But a uh, but a uh, but a magic trick. I don't. I don't. I yes, I have. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Uh, uh, no, no, I haven't. But um, I have stood close up with a magician in the kitchen of my home in, in Los Angeles, a very, very, very famous magician, and watched him do things that were unbelievable and exciting, but also watched him do things that ought not to have been happening. And they truly made me want to take a step away from him because it, what I was seeing, I should not be seeing at all. And it, I, I anyway, he's become a friend, this man now, and, 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 and kind of, he just lives for magic, that's the point. It's exciting to be with someone. Mm. He, he suddenly went over my sink and vomited up four frogs, one after the other. <coughs> he vomited, for, I watched them. He handed them around, we held them in our hands, and he went, oh my goodness. And swallowed them, four of them. And I can roll yeah, my I thumb. Didn't. No, no, I can do a weird thing with my thumb. <laughs> it's just like, you know when people go like that? Like, what are you doing? The weird, like, it's a bit weird, like, it's a bit weird. It's a quite a trick still, though. I can do my eyebrows. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. My trick I used, I used to sometimes do is you attach a sort of thing there and you go. You attach a thing. I can cure hiccups. My children had seen me do it and they believed it so strongly. They can call me up on the phone and they'll say, Dad, I have hiccups. And I will say, after a moment or two, I think I said, they're gone and they've always gone. I, I, I don't know how it works, but it feels great to do it. I went into a, a shop the other day and, uh, the, and the assistant said, I'm, ter I'm terribly sorry, I've had hiccups all morning and I just don't know what to do at all. And I said, they've gone. Well, but I was taught this. She said, this is exactly how you do it and it will work every time and it does. Chunky, the cameraman, he, it was his last day because he was, it wasn't our last day, it was his because he was going to LA for something. 
And then we thought we'd give him a good send off, and we, we got this big pool, pool yeah. with the big lake scene, threw him in there. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, yeah, drowned. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. I think my favourite moment of filming was when we were on Bodmin Moor, and they, they'd got it all set up that we were, it was going to be torrential rain because the, you know we go through the portal at Stonehenge where it's sunny and nice, and suddenly we're plunged into this appalling weather on Bodmin Moor, and they had all the you know the rain ready because rain doesn't often show up on camera, so they have to make it. But it was the worst weather imaginable. I mean, it was truly appalling. And they didn't have to do anything post it. And, you know, we, we uh, my character Merlin, you know, he leans back against the rain and relishes it uh, and the wind and everything. But in between takes, we were all going, <laughs> you know, and having to dry our hair so that it looked like we were coming through into the warm. It was, it was a very memorable day. We were all glad for a cup of tea after that. Yeah, they brought a rain machine out to, because we, we didn't need the rain yeah. machine. And then we, yeah. Yeah, we, didn't, we, didn't, we, didn't. we had to, we had to go and sit in a car whilst they were preparing to do another shot because we couldn't be wet because it would. It was as if we'd come from a portal, so we couldn't be wet. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and it was funny because at one moment we were underneath this like tent thing, mm. and, um, and then there was like a massive wind that blew it off, and we were all grabbing onto oh, yeah. it. Right. <laughs> <Tom> screamed. <Yeah. laughs> and there's loads of like different coats and jackets and versions of the costume, so yeah. that they're dry and you can just change in and out. I, I loved my hair. <laughs> I did. I, 19 when when I lo I looked like this, and so uh, being able to transform my head by wearing. I, I, I keep all my wigs. I have a huge pile of wigs. I'm thinking of leaving it to the British Museum when, <laughs> I, when I retire. He came out of the screening, on uh, the, the, the premiere on Sunday, and he grabbed me and he said, I wish I had that hair. I wish I had that hair. <laughs> no, I'll give it to my son, because my son is an actor, very good actor, and he has no hair. So I think he should get the... Uh, the endowment of all these wigs. I remember convincing them at one point um, that there, there was a place called the Cheese Ring on Bodmin Moor, which is these amazing huge slabs of stone on top of one another. No one really knew why, how they got built like that. And I managed to convince them of this whole thing that it was erected to, to honour a cow who, who, who produced the first ever cheese. And they were all going, around, oh, fantastic, fantastic. And they were telling all the adults in the car, uh, the crew on set, do you know why it's this? Around? That was quite a good one. But I'm sure they, they, they had better ones than me. Well, when we're especially filming <laughs> serious scenes beforehand, we'd be making each other laugh. So in mid-scene, we'd just be looking at each other like this. Yeah, <laughs> just always yeah one, of the, one of the doubles, um, What's we'll put <laughs> Dean's headphones on? Oh yeah. As a prank. Put one of my headphones on. I had a grandma. She's not. She, I do. Have, I, I still have a grandma. <laughs> but like, she got like, unfortunately cut. But like, there's yeah. a really funny scene. We're all at the dinner table and she just comes over. She's Lance's grandma. And she's like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, with the tea <laughs> and the, the biscuits and, and the stuff. And like, glad she got friends. Mm. That was a good scene. When we were fighting, we were like fighting these men in like suits, like motion capture suits. Um, so we had to pretend that they were like these flaming knights, but a lot of the like back shots and were was green screen. Yeah, and with that as well, we had to imagine uh, Merlin as the owl as like a tennis ball, and then the horses sometimes would be also tennis balls with people running with them. Oh yeah. So it was. <laughs> but we had to. We, Joe told us what to imagine well, so that was easier. They like made CGI versions of it beforehand, so that he'd show us the scene in CGI version, and then we'd have to be, like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah little animations. Animations, and then the animations would be the green ball rule.